Hello there. Today I'm talking to you about a book that I've been reading and uh, I know I, I said it before that I would only talk to you about books I'm reading if they have something to do with translation and or languages and linguistics and stuff along those lines and that's exactly what this has to do. Now I read it on Kindle so I need to show you the title here and this book has to do with that. In fact it has to do with foreign accents as you can tell by the title. Foreign Accent, The Phenomenon of Non-Native Speech by Aline Moyer. Anyway, this, uh, this book, I found it excellent. It's from, I think, two years ago, and it's quite academic, but uh, I found it very interesting just because it talks about something that's near and dear to my heart, which is foreign accents, and more specifically also how easy or how difficult it is to get rid of your foreign accent. So it talks about the stuff like, is it easier for children, for younger people to learn an accent, to do they pick it up more quickly? and as opposed to adults who seem to take forever to learn new accents and new languages. And this is something that's always kind of troubled me, I guess it, mostly probably in a selfish way because I'm right now learning Chinese, which I didn't start until I was 35 and I'd like to learn new languages, but this kind of this defeatist kind of feeling that, oh, you can't learn new languages or you can't learn them well unless you're really young, that would kind of stop me. And so I really don't want that to be true and so I'm trying to get more information and see maybe how how it can be circumvented or maybe how as an adult there are different ways to learn as opposed to children and so you can learn better anyway so I found this book very interesting because it did talk about that and actually it had quite refreshing information there for those of you who are like me but uh, let me get into some other stuff that I talked about because I, I found it very interesting when it talked about stuff like accent based discrimination or something like that and uh, there's apparently a lot of discrimination based on accent like uh, I talked about one of the examples was an Iranian uh, person who got sued so what he did was he there was a, a job that was being that was available and he saw it uh, shortly after it was available I think it just popped up on the website online that it was available so he called and he had a, an Iranian accent and was told uh, oh no it's already been taken and so he's like, okay, well, that's too bad. He hangs up. But he got a bit suspicious because the job had just been made available and it was already filled up. So he asked one of his friends who spoke with a standard neutral American accent, or this might have been Canadian, it might have been in Canada, to call. Um, and so the friend called and sure enough, they say, oh yeah, we still have uh, an opening. Uh, yes, we'd be happy to interview. And so the friend said, uh, yeah, cool. Actually, it's not for me. It's for my friend who's Iranian and uh, would like to interview with you. And then they switched again. They're like, oh yeah, well, um, yeah, it turns out, yeah, we'll call you back, don't call us, or something like that, and they never called back, obviously. Uh, so this Iranian then sued and apparently won because that was definitely discrimination. But they had other issues, um, other instances where other people, I think there was a doctor who didn't get a job and sued uh, for the same reason, said, oh, it's just because I have a thick accent. And the hospital, whoever it was wanted to hire them, said yes, because it could be a hindrance. Like if we're in an emergency situation in the ER or something like that, and you have a thick accent and someone can't understand you, lives could be lost and that could be bad. And so this doctor actually lost the lawsuit because they agreed with him. Or sorry, they didn't agree with him. Uh, they agreed with the hospital because accent was an important thing there. And uh, so... So the, the, it, there is discrimination, but it's a bit iffy because certain times you need to be able to speak well and certain times you don't, but people just like with the call centers and all that, it talks a lot about that. A lot of people like to complain that they can't get someone with their own accent. And so they have a lot of, uh, apparently all these people who get hired from call centers in different countries, they get a lot of classes on, uh, on trying to learn, trying to get more of a neutral accent and a better accent and stuff like that. But let's face it, none of that is ever going to be life or death. Another interesting anecdote I thought was this town in Massachusetts, which uh, I forgot the name, Waverfee, Waverfield, something like that. Anyway, uh, which the parents started complaining that a lot of classes were taught by teachers who had foreign accents and they didn't want their kids to have these foreign accents. And so the teachers then, so they were complaining they wanted the teachers fired or else, you know, they wanted new teachers anyway. And the teachers are complaining, saying it's discrimination. The funny thing is, a lot of the parents were foreign born and had thick accents themselves. And in fact, the mayor of this town in Massachusetts, the name of which I wish I could remember, it started with a W, um, he was Greek born and he apparently had a thick accent. And he took the side of the parents as well. And he was saying, 
what he said was someone like me with an accent like mine should not be teaching young kids because we don't want the kids to be learning with an accent like this. Sorry, I'm, I, want, I wanted to look up the, uh, the exact quote just because I thought it was worth it, but I have no idea how to navigate Kindle and figure that out, so. Anyway, that's pretty much the story though. And, uh, and I found that interesting because you find parents who have a, a different accent discriminating against teachers with maybe that same accent because they don't want their kids to learn that. And it kind of makes sense. If you want your kid to learn a language, you want the kid to learn the language properly and not accent it. And anyway, it, goes, it talks a lot about that other stuff. And obviously it talks about learning a new language and how kids learn and how adults learn and stuff like that. And I always felt that in a way, these series have been a bit unfair to adults because kids seem to learn very quickly. On the other hand, many times kids say stuff like, hot, it's so hot today, so hot today. And we're like, oh wow, you speak the language so well. It's not even your first language. And you said so hot today, so hot today. But if I as an adult go somewhere and say, so hot today, so hot today, people are like, dude, learn how to speak, okay? And so they're given a bit more leeway, you know, which fine. And I also, I think it's, easier young young people kids don't care that much if they're embarrassed if they say something dumb they they laugh at themselves a lot more we as adults we get used to you know being in control being adults and trying to look good in front of other people and so if i make a really stupid mistake when i'm speaking i'll feel bad which makes me a bit more reticent makes me not want to speak as much and but i need to speak a lot more to to be able to improve my language uh, another thing that kids have is right away they have peers who speak the language usually because if a kid is learning, you know, if a kid from France is uh, moves over to, I don't know, uh, Saudi Arabia and is learning Arabic, usually they're going to school with a bunch of people who speak Arabic. And so right away they have a whole bunch of peers, people their age, who they play with, who they hang out with, who they interact with, who only speak that language. So they kind of have to learn it. We as adults don't really have that. If I'm from France and I go to Saudi Arabia, chances are I can still communicate with a bunch of people in, in, in French, uh, depending on if I'm going to work for a company or if I have friends, I'm going to check ahead of time. I can also talk to people online. And in order to learn a new language, you kind of need peers who speak that language. And yet peers who speak that language would want to interact with someone who already speaks that language. So in a way, it's a catch-22, a lot more so when you're an adult than when you're a kid. And so that's a big advantage that kids have. And they're doing construction. Hopefully that doesn't bother you too much. But anyway, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much done. The conclusion is actually anyone can learn a new language. And what it takes a lot more when you're an adult is a lot of willpower. And it, it, they, it's always studies and it quotes studies uh, of, uh, of various people in different circumstances. But it usually seems that if people really want to get rid of their accent and they actively try to do that, then they're usually able to. And they have a lot of examples of people who are kind of in the same boat, adults in the same boat. One never improved their accent and the other one did. And the main reason was the one who didn't was like, well, I'm an adult, I can't improve my accent, I don't care, I have people from my home country to talk to, so whatever. While people who did improve their accent actively tried to improve it. And anyway, I found it a very interesting book. It is a bit heavy because it's academic, but it was, uh, it was I, I thought it was very much worth it still. It was a bit expensive, at least when I looked for it online, it was like 40 bucks. And so what I did is I rented it on Kindle. You can rent it. Here we go. There. Foreign Accent by Aileen Moyer. So definitely look it up if that's something you're interested in. And if you want to learn more about the intricacies about learning a foreign accent and the difficulties and stuff along those lines. Uh, so hopefully you found that useful. And uh, if you're interested in foreign accents or in learning, perfecting a foreign language, then I do think it'll be very interesting for you as well. And uh, that's about it. I'll talk to you in the next video. Okay, thanks. Bye.